If you know anything about me, you know that I like computers playing language games. This is just the beginning of the class though, so let's start off with a really simple game called The Shannon Game. This was first published by Claude Shannon in 1950. Here he is juggling. And in talking about The Shannon Game, we'll see the connection between language and the statistical concept of entropy and get a sense of how a tool called language models actually works. In The Shannon Game, I show you a bit of an English utterance, and you need to tell me what the next character is going to... Okay, the next word is probably going to be B, and that starts with the letter B, funny enough. So, all right, so mm, uh, we were confirmed that this might be B. Should we follow up with that? Oh, uh, what do you know? It worked. The beautiful mathematical result from the Shannon game is that the entropy of the distribution of the next character is about equal to the number of guesses a skilled human needs to predict the next word. The entropy of a distribution is defined by the expected value of the log of 1 over the probability of a character, or negative log. Link to a review of entropy in the description if you want or need a refresher. But the short version is that Numerically, the entropy encodes the number of bits you need to describe the distribution. A higher number for the entropy of a distribution means that the underlying distribution was confusing and disordered. Low entropy means that it was stable and predictable. The lower the entropy, the easier it is to predict the next character. And for English, the entropy is somewhere between 3 and 4. And this is borne out by the Shannon experiment that he did while playing the Shannon game with his wife. He had a sentence, asked her to guess the next letter, and most of the time she guessed it right, and even when she didn't, uh, the guesses didn't really get higher than 8. And this is out of 27 total letters in the alphabet, so when you average over all of the guesses, you get something between 3 and 4. This was the 50s, and computers looked something like this. So you couldn't play this game with a computer, and nor could you play the game using words as your guesses instead of letters. But you play this game every day with your phone. As you type, it's trying to predict your next word, not character, to speed things along. Predicting words was just inconceivable at the time, but we do it all the time now with a tool called language models. So how could you actually build a language model? That's the kind of thing that gets covered in a natural language processing class. Link in the description for an example of how to do that with conditional probabilities. However, when I teach natural language processing students, they often seem unsatisfied with such a simple starting point. We'll get to the good stuff in an NLP class, but the starting point is a good one. Even though students are anxious to jump to neural language models, but every model, even those dumb language models that I start with, are built from data. So it's useful to implement really simplistic language models to see the kind of pre-processing we often need to do with our data to get stuff to work well. But let's put the practicalities of implementing a language model for something like the Shannon game on hold and reflect on the bigger picture. What does it mean for a distribution to have some amount of entropy? One of the key problems of artificial intelligence is to separate the signal from the noise. Language has structure and randomness. A smart human playing the game can get pretty close to the true entropy of English. That shows that we have internalized how English works. We have expectations of what words are going to come next in a sentence. As the song Shaving Cream uh, by Benny Hill, sung by Paul Wynn, demonstrates. A link to a full version of the song in the description that craftily exploits your language modeling assumptions. But don't you dare click on that link until you first finish watching this video. So let's think how we might play this instance of the Shannon game. There are patterns in the real world that we can exploit to make better predictions and decrease our entropy. This is a song, and songs often rhyme. I have a sad story to tell you It may hurt your feelings a bit Last night when I walked into my bathroom I stepped in a big pile of sh So we see bit up above, and we know that the word starts with sh, and we're in a bathroom context. 
Hopefully you're seeing how hard this is for a computer. It needs to have common sense knowledge about what goes on in the bathroom, needs to understand the structure of songs, and needs to understand what nouns can be piled and what could be stepped on. Uh, for example, if you were predicting the letter E for the next word, shellac, uh, that would be inconsistent. You normally wouldn't find shellac in a bathroom and you can't pile it because it's too viscous. And maybe you're using other pragmatic information like the thumbnail for this video to inform your guess. So let's actually see what the correct answer is. A big pile of shaving cream. Be nice and clean. Shave every day and you'll always look king. A, of course, for the A in shaving cream, the title of the song. Some entropy is unavoidable. If we could always perfectly predict the next word, that means that we would have memorized the input or that it's from a deterministic mechanism. But the world doesn't work like that. We see new inputs every day. And indeed, there are psycholinguistic studies that suggest that readers and listeners like some level of surprisal in the text and songs that they consume. They want to be entertained by subverting expectations like shaving cream did, or to be told something new that they didn't know before. So hopefully you can see why I wanted to start off the course with the Shannon game. It's a game whose upper bound is defined by human performance, much like the Turing test, which we'll talk more about later, and by a beautiful mathematical result. And if you want to have a computer do well on this task, you need to have a computer that can effortlessly absorb all the details that a human can. And all of this from a game that's essentially just computing conditional probabilities. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm. That reminds me, let's make that thumbnail.